This video is a response to Alexander Bespali. Being an electronic engineer, Alexander is very passionate about basic educational projects. In the recent video, he looks back at 40 years of integrated receiver designs. He demonstrates the subsequent development of those ICs with a few prototypes. His final design is built around a SOIC 16 SMD digital signal processor from Silicon Labs. Being a fully digital IC, it mimics the controls of an analog receiver. Building a receiver is a nice entry-level project and Alexander's design is focused around resiliency, satisfaction and motivation. So I thought it would be a nice exercise to build a PCB for this thing and to support his effort in this way. There are actually two chips that come into question, but they are identical and you can source the ones that you get quicker and cheaper. The design itself is based around reference implementation of this chip, but interestingly, Alexander leaves the optional crystal in place and omits the AM antenna. I wonder how it would work without both. Maybe I can turn it in some kind of electroslug or some kind of unstable receiver for artistic purposes. We will see. I start by creating the project in Easy EDA, which is a browser product of JLCPCB. Now it's time to select the needed components from the library. We start with the main chip, which is found pretty fast. Make sure that all components that you drag over from the library got this footprint representation in red-black. If you get one with a third 3D representation underneath, it's even better. We can see that the pin representation doesn't match up with the physical one that Alexander is using, but it's okay. The reference implementation also uses that real-life pin alignment. And then I place PCC and ground sources. And start looking for other components. An audio jack would be nice, for example. Its yellow-black representation looks like the one that I got in stock. And now I'm looking for the capacitor. We will need only one for each, for each type. The actual capacitance you can just write underneath. Later we will see that the capacitor that I selected was actually not the good one. Because it had some problems with making joints. So we will change it later. But for now, let's proceed with other components. And then I stumbled across this through hole. Let's keep it. A through hole is a nice thing to have. And here's our crystal. It's a little bit big, but it will do the job. And here comes another through hole. Let's keep it also. Maybe it's somehow better. Sometimes, if you don't know the right name for the components, it's useful to look up in the user contributions, because the users are calling their models in a simple language. On the other hand, if you got the proper part number or the real name of the thing, it's better to look up in the standard library. If you are not sure which component will work best, just place all of them. So now I think we got all the parts and we can start wiring. According to pin numbers in Alexander's schematics, not to the actual picture itself.
and now we are ready to save the project and convert it to an actual PCB. But before we do that, it would be nice to check all the connections and the program does it for us. It throws a few false positives, like on the pins that are not in use and on unused components, but it's a nice tool for first debugging check. So uh, until now everything looks fine, by then I remember that I wanted to add a voltage regulator and I just copied it from another project, which is a motion capture node, you can, you can look it up in another video on my channel. The voltage regulator add-on will give us the possibility of powering this circuit from source of up to 12 volts. And those things are called net ports, they are basically like a teleport, so you don't have to draw a wire across all the schematics, you just know that those two points are connected, sometimes it's a really useful thing. It also helps you to split your circuit up into modules. Now it looks better, let's save it and proceed to converting it to PCB. Checking all connections one more time. So now it looks good and we can now the test, just generate the thing. So I kind of start sorting it around and then I realize that the, con the capacitors are not connected. This is probably an issue with the library model, so I just switch the component with the ones that I have in my voltage stabilizer circuit. And here we go again. This revolve found its usage as an antenna pin and double pin header from the voltage regulator is also used as a power connector. Here you can see the work of the cloud-based outer router. It doesn't work every time, but when it does, it does a pretty nice job. But then I remembered that I wanted to add an additional audio out, so after updating the circuit, the progress achieved by the outer router was gone, and it didn't work for me that day anymore, so I proceeded with manual routing. The red color represents the top copper layer, the bottom one is represented by the blue color, yellow and green layers represent the top and bottom cell prints accordingly.
that looks good enough. Let's generate a 3D view. As you can see, only two parts are represented. That's because the other ones are lacking the 3D model. A few minor fixes. Now we are basically done. I will wait a few days and then correct it one more time, look for other issues. If you have some critique or advice according to this thing, feel free to comment. I still have doubts about ground plane and antenna management, how we should put that into layout. Maybe you know better. Also feel free to visit the channel of Alexander, he's a great radio engineer who puts a great effort in saving lives on the front line of Ukraine. He does a lot of radio control stuff, a lot of research. He also documents the whole state of mind that the majority of Russian, Russians currently find themselves in. And if you want to support the anti-fascist action in Ukraine, just donate to his PayPal account. It will support the cause. Yeah, thanks for being there.